Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom. Nathan Drinkard, I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. One Anchor, one Apple Podcast, one Spotify. We're in so many other podcasting platforms. And if you're looking for us in the video format, you can find us at the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. Hope you'll like, listen, and subscribe. And check us out on all those platforms. Drink, great to have you with us. Hey, man, you know, I'm glad. I I'm, feel good to be here, man. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Lots of lots of great stuff to get into. Got a four four segment variety package here today. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we get the opportunity to show our versatility, our <laughs> diversity, however you want to look at it. And um, I think that's where we at today. So, you know, not to prolong us in the in the longer, you know what I'm saying? We see what they don't, we say what they want. And last but not least, let's talk some sports, baby. Let's roll, baby. All right, episode 66, we're going to unveil our top 10 NBA players, debate the NFL's new COVID policy, and what's in a name in terms of Cleveland, base, of Cleveland baseball. We'll explain. We'll begin back in college football, an update to the story we brought you on Thursday, in Thursday's show, where Texas and Oklahoma, that move to the SEC, appears to be some sort of imminent based on reporting uh, by ESPN's David Hale. Uh, it appears that they could make their move official in a matter of weeks, uh, and even more than that, the SEC, it appears that they're eyeing even more expansion with the likes of uh, Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, Florida State, which would uh, massively change the landscape of college football. Drink, what's your reaction to all this news? It, listen, um, every day I, 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 I will uh, – bet to venture that as we speaking right now it's probably something going on right now with the with the sec and adding more teams it, it seems to me that i know the sec and texas and oklahoma are the, the the headline names of all this but it seems to be a little bigger than that it, it seems to me that these conferences um and when i'm talking about the big 12 sec acc and big 10 not necessarily the Pac-12 as much. Um, it, it seems like they're really looking to try to figure out how to get out of their current situations. They want to make just, it seems they want to make one super conference or either they want to make it, and I, and, um, I think George, um, our, our luxurious form, you know, host out here doing what he do, you know, shouts out to him and everything he got going on. He sent... The, a message in our group chat where he was talking about like it's it's a possibility that the college football could turn into the NFL and we could have more of an NFC versus AFC look. It seems to me that that does. The more I listen to this, that does seem to be like what the SEC trying to do. So if you if you create like one side and you let's say. Um, they pull in Texas and Oklahoma, right? And then they still in, in talks to either get Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, or Florida State into the mix. And then what I would see is the rest of the teams, because it, it still will be some good teams left, right? The rest of the good teams would, you know, take their talents on the other side and create, like, somewhat of a super conference where you have, let's say Clemson don't go. So you have, like, Clemson, um, Oregon, you know, Michigan State, Penn State, um, and, and it probably wouldn't be what you would consider the elite of the elite, but it'll be enough to where you cr you can create another side and then build something off that other conference. But like I was telling you before we got on this subject, what what I what I'm starting to actually um, I think comprehend with all this is it, it goes back to the old adage that college football needed a commissioner. They need one person calling the shots. I ain't talking about the NCAA chairman that, you know, gets to pick and choose when when they put their um, they hard hat on and go to work. Hence the um, women's college basketball <laughs> tournament. We, we see that. Um, so with that said, actually a, a person that gets held accountable, like Roger Goodell gets held accountable in the NFL, um, Adam Silver in the NBA, um, like those guys, and I, I feel like this is the way to get to that. If you bring in all these these powerhouses, put them in one conference, and then 
you make the AD of the SEC just change his title to commissioner of the SEC, I think this can work. I think you now you will put one person in charge. That one um, commissioner will meet with the ADs. The ADs will probably kind of sit as either the ADs or the presidents. One, one of the two will probably sit as like the owner of uh, each uh, program. And then you go and you make decisions like that and you kind of follow the blueprint of the pros. I'm not necessarily mad at that. Also, Another thing, I, I, and I heard somebody say something about this, and I, I kind of like this idea. I think a, a, a point that we overlook with all this, you know, expansion and realignment and how, what have you, you know how we have 130 Division One teams? Mm-hmm. Well, if we're keeping it real, I think only 80 of those 130 teams really got a shot at playing in the playoffs, in the in the um, FBS playoff, that is. And what I like about this whole, if this happens, if 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 Texas and Oklahoma leaves, which seems to be like this is going to happen, they're going to go off and then they're probably going to disband the Big 12. I, I like that simply because I think we're going to get rid of a whole conference and – I feel bad for the Big 12 that we're getting rid of that conference, but I do like that the numbers will go from 130 to like 80 or something like that once they get done realignment. Because I don't think it's 130, you know, good Division One teams. So we drop it down to 80. It gives us a little more, a better sample size look at who's good and who's not. Wouldn't mind if they cut it down to 60, but you know whatever. Um, so. As I look at that, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either. Now, I, w- I want to, you know, highlight something that we talked about on Wednesday because everybody's locked in on Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC, and everything I read says that they're moving. They're moving for sure. They're getting out of the Big 12. I don't know if it's signed, sealed, and delivered to the SEC, though. Um, I hear that the ACC has approached them about coming over there. Um, the Pac-12 evidently would love to have them in the Pac-12 to, to raise their awareness. Um, I've, I even read that the Big Ten and talked to these two teams. However, let's keep it real. The big boys on the block, the SEC, they are more appealing to Texas and Oklahoma just because, one, the teams that they have already inside the conference, two, the recruiting prowlers down in the South, and then three, just the overall respect that the, the SEC has garnished throughout the decades of, of this sport. So that, it makes sense to me why the SEC is the, the conference that keep getting floated around. I don't necessarily think they're the only conference. And like I said, um, it's been reported by uh, Barstool Sports that the SEC is looking at Ohio State and Michigan and Clemson and Florida State. So I'm telling you right now, this is about to get crazy. Oh, by the way, we're talking about expanding the playoffs. How would that affect it? Oh, by the way, the transfer the transfer portal is just allowing people just to sign a piece of paper and then chuck the deuces. How would that work? So we got a lot going on in college football. We got a lot going on. We got realignments. We got a new playoff format they want to introduce. We got you know, the, 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 the transfer portal seems to be the place to recruit from now instead of the actual high schools. We got, oh, and did I mention the NIL? We got that going on as well. It A lot is going on. And you, you'll you be out of your mind if you don't think the NIL got something to do with Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC as well. That, that definitely got something to do with it as well because now you can use that as a recruit tool. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, back to back to the task at hand, man. I think we're we're still in the figuring out stage. I wouldn't be surprised if come Wednesday or what come Thursday when we do our next show that we'll be talking about this again because we're gonna get more and more developments. And I think a curveball is gonna get thrown into this. I would not be surprised if. I, I, I'm been hearing things that Oklahoma and Texas could go to two different conferences. Hmm. Um, they they want they want to go to the SEC, but hey, 
what if Oklahoma is promised to be the mainstay in, in, in the Pac-12? Or Texas is promised to be, you know, the headline in the, in the Pac-12. But Oklahoma want to go to the SEC or vice versa. You know, um, it, it, it's nothing to the SEC to say, okay, we'll take Oklahoma and then we'll go holler at Florida State and see what, what they think about coming to the SEC. It don't make the SEC in, in, in my either way because they're both two good teams with brand names that's coming into the conference. And by the way, if Oklahoma did come to the SEC, I seen a poll by some pretty prominent people that says Oklahoma will be the second best team behind Alabama in the SEC. Just throwing it out there. But I, I do think it's it's we, we got a chance to see some more curveballs in this situation. Um I'm gonna sit back and see what more developments we got. It's a lot going on, folks, in this saga. But I just say don't get caught up in just the Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC thing. There's a lot more going on outside of that. We're going to sit back and, and see how this unfolds. Don't be surprised if we come back to you on Thursday of next week with more information on this developing story. I got to I gotta get at that um, that poll that poll you referenced real quick. Um, first of all, I don't, I don't trust polls for a, for a multitude of reasons. But I would also say, um, not that the poll is inaccurate, but I think it's somewhat short-sighted if you're answering whatever questions they're answered were answered okay. based on that. Okay. I think we, it's, and this, this goes back to the reason why on Thursday's show, I said, I, I don't like this. Um, because Oklahoma, which has controlled the Big 12 pretty much, for, for years now, especially since the college football playoff has started. Um, it's one thing to just run through the Big 12 and make the college football playoff. It's another thing to enter the SEC and make a run through that conference because there is a huge difference between going through the, uh, the Big 12 and, you know, playing Kansas and playing Texas Tech and, you know, some of these weaker teams. There's a, there's a lot more quality depth in the – in the SEC. So on its, I mean, on its face as of right now, like, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, Alabama's in the, uh, you know, CFP seemingly year in and year out. So is Oklahoma. They must be the second best team. But people, people are in, people in, in that poll got to be, I don't think the, the thought process is quite clear because you're forgetting Georgia, you're forgetting Florida, you're forgetting LSU, you're forgetting Auburn. The depth in the SEC is so impressive. And Oklahoma does not have to go through that to meet Alabama in the playoffs, and then and then oh by the way, just get just get wrecked, you know, on on most occasions. So, and that's why and that's why I don't necessarily like like this because Oklahoma, Texas, they run the risk if they go to SEC of having of having a tough time. Now, Oklahoma, I think of course will have a better chance, and I think they'll be competitive. Like they'll be to me off his face, they'll be kind of in the Florida range of things, like really close, really close to, you know, competing for SEC titles. But, you know, I mean, Texas ain't Texas is not cutting it in the Big 12 right now. That's why they keep having the coaching turnover and all that. So the Pac-12 angle is interesting. And it's kind of it's kind of interesting that now all these, you know, now you have the ACC apparently, man, we was going to try to make a run at these dudes. And now the Pac-12, the Pac-12 just over here, like, hey guys, we'd love to have you over here. They just, I mean, the 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 thing about this is the more you think about it, and the more we see now, the SEC is just like full on on a power trip, just trying to get everybody. Right. I mean, if you pull Ohio State and Michigan out the Big Ten, and you pull Clemson and Florida State out the ACC. We we was talking. I mean, I, I told you on I told you on uh, Thursday that the Big 12's done if this happens. Well, the Big Ten, the, AC, the ACC's done if Clemson leaves, and the Big Ten is, you know, and it's been kind of the SEC, the best conference. But the Big Ten is like they're right there. They're clearly second best, and like, you know, they got impressive depth too. When you talk about Wisconsin and Penn State and what we saw from Minnesota a few years ago. But you pull you pull the you know the best two programs out of there, they're severely compromised, and they're they're out here hobbling around now. This appears to be um, what we're seeing now because I look at when you look at just college football through the years, with the way it's set up with these you know the Power Five conferences, at least that's what we know them as in the modern era. The the sport has a real regional feel to it. 
the SEC, obviously the South, the Southeast, uh, the ACC, you know, up along the coast above the SEC, the Big Ten got, you know, the Midwest going on, the Pac-12 over on the West Coast. It has a real regional feel to it. And I like that about college football. This right here, what we're seeing the SEC try to pull, the sport is about to be nationalized. If you have, if you take all the, the best teams from each conference, it, it, don't we don't need to play around with the, the super conference. That's a league. That's called a league. If you got, I'm seeing numbers to where they like, man, they got eyes on a 32 team super conference. That would be a league. The NFL is 32 teams. Baseball and basket and the NBA are 30 teams. That's that's its own league. And you would have if you if that actually happened, the whole sport, I think, would have to be realigned. All the leftover teams in the Pac-12, ACC, Big Ten, you know, they're I don't think I mean, outside of a few, like I'm thinking uh, Penn State, Wisconsin, Southern Cal, um, uh, dare I say Oklahoma State, you know, teams like that. Could they potentially like have a chance to like compete against this uh, the SEC, which probably would have to be renamed if you bring in all these other teams? They're not going to have a chance. So I think you would all you'd almost have to have a situation where you go back to um, division one, division two, like the SEC would have to be its own division. Cause I don't think if you just stack one conference with all the best teams, I mean, what chance is that I'm talking football again, what chance does Paul Kansas have in any, in any event? I mean, and then Arizona and, you know, Paul Virginia over here, what we going to do, you know, like it's, I think but, you have to, but the, I mean, I guess my pushback is what chance do they have anyway? Like, at the end of the day, like, I think it would be good for the sport to pro progress that way because w when these kids go to these schools, what are they trying to do anyway? They're trying to prepare themselves to go to the professional level. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, I, I got it, the school and all that, I, education and opportunity, yeah, I got that. But for the most part, now that they're getting paid, they're they're trying to prepare themselves to go to the next level. If you turn college into that, listen, first and foremost, college football ain't nothing but a development ground for the NFL anyway. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's where they pull most of their data from. That's what they look at. That's where they get it from. I don't think it's necessarily bad if you turn college football into a, a 30 league and get and cut the riff raff. Cut the BS bowls that we got to watch. Sorry. We, when you turn on ESPN, the, the the main event game ain't BYU versus Coastal Carolina. Like, I I, I feel like this is ne not necessarily bad for the sport unless you're just crying about the little schools that, that, that don't do anything anyway. That's why they're the little school. So... I wouldn't mind this whole league thing, to be honest. I, and if you got enough teams where you can make it, you know, West versus East or however you want to name it, then I, I would be for that too. Because it's about time for us to get rid of the, the, the um, I don't know, man, these, these group of five teams, most of them I don't care for. Listen, North Dakota State is more popular than half of the group of five teams. Like, let's be real here. Matter of fact, if they can, they should pull North Dakota State and pull it into one of these leagues because whoever running the show down there know what the hell he's doing. So put him in here, and we'll get um, some of these other teams. Tulane, we, we'll trade you Tulane for North Dakota State. How about that? You know, so I I, I don't necessarily – I'm not mad at it, but I, I get your point. I just want to throw that out there. I'm sorry. I think, and so and here, here's, an, here's an example that maybe will articulate my point. A little bit better and i'm and like the whole group of five thing i'm not worried about them anyway because th those are the teams that really don't have much of a chance i mean we, we just saw we've seen the best of central florida we've seen you know what cincinnati did last year i thought they had a great season and should have been you know a little bit strong consideration for the playoff but i'm not necessarily worried about that i'm worried about the teams that are in power five conferences that it don't it's matter. not outside the say again i said that don't matter well, I mean, well, I mean, for, well, for example, if we're going off Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, Florida State, and there are probably more, but think about team, think about the Penn States and the Wisconsin's teams who I understand they haven't made the playoff yet, but it's not, it's not outside the realm of the imagination that they could make it at some point. 
if this happens, if the SEC just balloons to a 32-team conference or league and Penn State and Wisconsin don't make the club, then they won't make the playoff ever. Because well, it, well, that, at well, least that's how I see it. If it's 32 teams, why wouldn't they make it? I think you, you well, you, dep you depending. Penn State and Wisconsin is amongst the top 32 teams in the country. They, they are, but th but then that begs the question, how much expansion are you going to have? If you're going to have, if you're going to do perhaps 16, then yeah, they pro they got to probably have a chance to make it in. But what I'm talking about more like currently what we have now in a 14 playoff scenario, if the SEC went to 32 teams, the, the there would be a, an easy argument, I think, that the four best teams are just going to be inside that conference. I think it would be very hard for another team outside of there to break in. The other thing is, think about this. Suppose this happened, let's just say 10, 15 years ago, and you had a 32-team super conference. You, Clemson would not be what Clemson is now. They wouldn't have a chance, I don't believe. That we wouldn't, we wouldn't know about Dabo Sweeney, not to this degree, because Clemson, you remember 10, 15 years ago, they were a middle of the pack ACC program that didn't do a whole lot. And if you had a 32 team conference, uh, league or conference back then, I don't think Clemson, I don't know if Clemson's getting the invite because, I mean, face it, look, the SEC is going for the brand name powerhouses. When you talk about Texas, Oklahoma, Michigan, Ohio State, and Clemson of today, but back then, nobody wants. I don't think. I don't think the SEC would be looking at Clemson. So, uh, I'm really the similar to how I was on on Thursday. I'm uncomfortable with this. I don't like it. Um, now it could. I mean, there's some a little bit of interest to packing all of the 32 best teams and saying let's go. But I mean, I think you're going to have to like re realign everything at that point, and you're going to have to go. But like the whole group of five thing we have now, like I think you'd have to say like. Virginia, Washington State, Kansas, like they'll they'll have to be group of five status too. And and another thing I notice is what I don't hear is we're talking about the SEC grabbing all the best teams. I haven't heard any of the Pac-12 teams being linked to the SEC. I haven't heard Oregon. I haven't heard USC. So it's I mean, yes, the SEC seems to be wanting to get all the best teams, but it don't seem like all of them. Because I think it's a case to be made, if we put it that way, that Oregon should be in this conversation somewhere. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I know USC has been down, but, I mean, still USC. So you would think they will be in the mix. So that is what I mean by, like, I think you have enough teams if you wanted to create conferences, like you said, or leagues. You could have it. it it's because... Let's be real here. It's essentially the same thing with, like, how we looked at the NBA a couple of years ago with the East and the West. Oh, mm -hmm. the West is so much stronger than the East. But the East is still a conference. It's yeah. just not as good as the West, right? So I feel like it's enough teams left if you want to do 16 and 16 to, you know, make 32 or, yeah. you know, you want to do however you want to do that. I think there's enough teams where you could create that. And I do agree. Some of these teams that we that we consider playoff contenders will probably drop, or they will rise to the occasion, go and dominate. They, you know, go and dominate the arena. Now we are look we look at them kind of like we look at North Dakota State once again. North Dakota State is considered the Alabama or the FCS. Yes, it's the FCS, but as you can see, just look at the NFL draft. They garnish a lot of respect as an FCS team, so I don't necessarily think this graveyard shift for your your conference. But I do agree with what you're saying. Like this, this could turn turn out to be bad.